very somber morning here at Alliday Mobile Media. Chopin, or Chopin, 1892, the death march. It seems I have an idiot amongst the midst, and they threw our guest of honor in the garbage. Gave him a funeral in the dumpster. They removed him this morning. Yes, Will Cox Organic will no longer be with us, and neither will the 2011 loaf of bread from Sarah Lee. It showed up. I got a picture. I promoted it. Bozo sat right here next to me when I promoted it. Threw him away. Threw him away. Very sad day here at Alliday Mobile Media. If we're talking Wilcox Organic, it's GMO Tuesday. GMO Tuesday, of course, brought to you by Foothill Feed and Mercantile. Reno, Nevada area, ladies and gentlemen. They got that organic. They got that certified organic non-GMO food for your critters. Get over there and uh, uh, give Shannon a uh, look-see and... She'll help you out, man. You won't get that pig growing that third eye. Uh, uh, Foothill Feed and Mercantile, of course, 1330 Geiger Grade in Reno, Nevada. Uh, what is it? 775-852-0999. Tell Shannon I said hello. Uh, uh, you know, the look in the description this week, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of information in the links. Um, one of the links is from the, the, the Food Network, the Food Revolution uh, uh, what is it, John and Ocean Roberts, I think it is, or Robbins, uh, uh, they uh, uh, have some stuff about animals and, you know, animals and people and how we go together, uh, uh, hand in hand on the planet, if you will. We got to coexist, got to coexist. Big scare this week, and I'm baffled at the big scare just coming to light. Asian honey, there's been a problem since 2010 with Asian honey, animal droppings in it, uh, metal, lead, uh, uh, stuff like that. Uh, flavored water is basically what we're being told. But, link in the description, ladies and gentlemen, 29 countries, 27 countries. All of Europe says no, but our wonderful FDA has green-lighted it. Yes, whom do your elected officials represent, ladies and gentlemen? Because they're not representing us. And remember... Even though it's the FDA and maybe we don't vote for that person, they do get appointed by the people we vote for. Uh, uh, They enforce the laws that are made by the people we vote for. Whom do your elected officials represent? Follow the money. Don't be like the MPM bozos and just read from a cheat sheet with talking points. We'll touch on that in a minute. We'll touch on that in a minute. But I I, I have a a question here for the FDA. And of course, this has been under Obama's administration, 2010. Why are we hearing just now that there's been a problem with the honey coming out of Asia since 2010? Why are we not hearing about it in 2010? You know, I'm here in the Midwest, folks, uh, and many people have followed the travels across the country to the Midwest, and the closer I got to the Midwest, the less bees I have seen. I see fields full of flowers around here, gorgeous, and the countryside here is just gorgeous. Lots of agriculture, lots of uh, uh, ecosystems going on, but no bees. I mean, when I see a field full of flowers, where I'm from, you hear that field humming. There's so many bees. The field literally hums. The the, the rose garden I set up with all the irises and all the the, the different tulips and daffodils and all the different flowers, the, the autumn's mist and everything, those yards hummed every day. Every day. I go by and I see massive Russian sage plants not one bee on them. Not one bee on the West Coast, ladies and gentlemen. They're covered in bees. Now, I know, and this this is uh, uh, something we're going to get to here, because we are going to talk about the Monsanto trial for just a minute. And we'll hold this thought till we get there, because there's something called correlation is not causation, and I say poppycock. 
Before we get there, let's talk about CRISPR for just a minute. It's not a failed technology. It's a developing technology. And that's very important to understand the difference between the golden rice, which is a failed technology, and a developing technology. Uh, uh, my buddy over there on, on, on No Ideas Media a while back used a Lego analogy to tell us about GMOs. I think he misapplied the Lego analogy to the GMOs. The Lego analogy is more aptly applied to CRISPR technology because what we're doing is we're cutting and taking and splicing and moving genes. Not as uh, uh, what uh, when you're talking GMO technology, we're taking something from over here, putting it in here, and giving you this to use less of our number one selling product. Here's what's dangerous about the CRISPR technology. They're using all the buzzwords. There's 9 billion people. The, uh, uh, there was something about meat, where they take a cell of meat, and, and again, they're going to make laboratory meat. They don't have to go through no GMO stuff to do this. This is, this is some scary science fiction stuff going on here, folks. And, and I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not, that's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we need to take a step back. We need to look at it a little better. When they do something with this CRISPR technology to come up with one mutation, as they call it, a single mutation, and they get 48, needs a little refining, I would think. Not just jump on that bandwagon. Oh, that's not GMO. Let's do it. Let's take a look at it. Same with the meat. I'm working on getting a video link on this thing I've watched, and it's kind of disturbing. They're going to make meat in a Petri dish and put it on your plate with no study? No, it's not GMO. So we can use this technology to feed the 9 billion people. We can use this technology to reduce 96% of the greenhouse gas and reduce global warming. They're using all these buzzwords. A particular party, political entity, if you will, uses to trigger stuff. Uh, uh, and they're all catchphrases. There's going to be 9 billion people. We have to figure out how to feed them. Well, they haven't done that with the GMO technology yet. That was promised to us back in 92. It hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. 25 years later, has not happened. It's a lie. 25 years later, we're using 15 times more of their number one selling product that they weren't going to be using anymore because this would reduce that use. I get mocked a lot for saying common sense. Use a little common sense and apply a little common sense to this. Whom do your elected officials represent? Follow the money. Simple as that. No ifs, ands, or buts. Follow the money. Use a little common sense. We know they radiate food. We know they do all kinds of stuff to our food. Our food supply is the worst on the planet. I have talked to people from Europe, ladies and gentlemen. This stuff that they're stuffing down your gullet, they won't allow it in their countries. That's how they can have socialized medicine and not go broke. Think about it. You, you want to talk correlation is not causation. Okay, fine. But, but, if you actually listen to what Stephanie Seneff is saying, uh, uh, Sorelli, Mercola, you start listening to what these people are saying, there is a plausible causative argument that can be made. I'm sorry, when you start using something and putting it into the food supply and you see a spike in a health ailment, you can't tell me that correlation doesn't tie in. That is not the causation. When they do an experiment where they're feeding GMO corn to the pig, the pig's babies come out sideways, and then they stop. That same pig gives birth to good animals. You can't tell me the correlation is not causation. Use a little common sense. When I was a kid, we didn't have gluten problems. We didn't have autism uh, 
percentages of our, our, our school being off the charts where we needed a whole special school for autism children. There, there, there was none of... Uh, uh, asthma wasn't as bad. We, was there... A, yeah, we had a couple kids with, with asthma, but not 25% of the school... You know, there wasn't a gluten problem. There wasn't all these problems with sugars and sweeteners like we have today with all the chemicals in the food. I'm, look, when you go get, I, I'll give you an example. I, I make golden milk for, for somebody I'm helping out. I go and I look and I look, when I look at the ingredients and there's anything else in the can of coconut milk other than water and coconut milk, I put it back on the shelf. It's a chemical. When you start seeing words that have 13, 27 letters in them, it's a chemical. High fructose corn syrup. We had blueberry pancakes this morning. The idiot that threw Wilcox Organic away, he wanted syrup. I said, that's high fructose corn syrup. It ain't really syrup. Pure syrup costs about 20 bucks for an 8-ounce bottle. Who do you think did that, ladies and gentlemen? Look on the back of a bottle of syrup that's all nice and thick. Mrs. Butterworth, look at it come out. It's a bottle of goo. High fructose corn syrup has a chemical put on the corn stalks, and they put it through a press at high heat. It's literally corn squeezins. Not, and, and not grannies. I'll tell you that, not grannies. Lake Tahoe Markets, ladies and gentlemen, Lake Tahoe Markets. Order today, you get your farmer's market goods on Friday. Certified organic farmer's market goods. They got the Bentley beef up there and all kinds of stuff. Check them out. Link is in the description. The Monsanto trial starts July 9th, I believe. July 9th is, uh, uh, today is July 3rd, and happy Independence Day to everybody out there, to all the vets, all the military folks that make it possible for us to have a good time and speak our peace. Enjoy our Second Amendment rights. Thank you very large. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Let me see here. Today is the 3rd, so the 9th is Monday. Uh, uh, July 9th is Monday, ladies and gentlemen. That's when the trial starts. Uh, I have a link in the description on, on information that you can go to to check. You can read the, the briefs. You can read the complaints. You can read all the documents involved in this case. Um, and, and, and let's make no mistake about this. And again, I ask, I ask, are we suing the wrong people? Are we suing the wrong people? Um, is Monsanto guilty of deception? Oh, there's no questions about it. Have they lied about glyphosate? Have they tainted and muddied the waters? Oh, boy, howdy have they. They've created their own science agencies. Okay? Now, the Genetic Literacy Project that everybody wants to quote as a reliable source wants to bang Rachel Carson. Remember, for those of you who have not been indoctrinated to Monsanto science. You'll remember Rachel Carson was the one that raised the DDT alarm bells uh, uh, and because they were killing the bald eagles, they were killing the fish in the stream, et cetera, et cetera. DDT, Rachel Carson. Now she's a bad person. Now they're, 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 they're putting all these things. Uh, uh, this is, uh, and basically all their writers are opinionated, paid scientist, industry shills, if you will, because the whole site it was started by Monsanto organizations. When you look at who runs everything, they, they are so deep, their history with the agrochemical industry is phenomenal, and yet they're relied upon as a reliable source, as an unbiased source. Poppycock. Poppycock, poppycock. But Glyphosate linked health conditions. There's also a, a link in the description, and it is well. Here's what's here's what's important to understand, and this is what gets lost in, in all the hullabaloo. They have classified glyphosate as many different things. 
antibiotic, an herbicide, a drying agent, all kinds of stuff. How have they been able to do that? Whom do your elected officials represent? Because they put people in place that okay this. Michael Taylor, longtime attorney for Monsanto. Where does he end up? FDA, EPA, he's bounced around all those agencies writing policy that favors the agencies. But yet, we don't have a food labeling bill. We don't, we, we, they label the frickin' pet food, but not our food. Moms across America, nine million moms can't be wrong about wanting to know what they're putting on the table for their kids, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. A little common sense, a little common sense is what is necessary. A little common sense. You don't need a PhD. Let me ask you something, folks. Neil deGrasse Tyson wants you to believe, and this is one of the most intelligent people on the planet. I've actually had people block me because I've said they're stupid for believing the argument he puts up. This man is an astrophysicist. Okay? An astrophysicist. He's a rocket scientist. He's not a geneticist like Dr. David Suzuki. He's not a gen This isn't what he does. He does stuff in outer space. An astrophysicist. What makes him an expert on GMO technology? But yet, he's a mouthpiece for the industry talking about GMO technology. Look, for millions of years, we've been genetically modifying our food. We take the boy girl and rub it on the, 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 the boy flower on the girl flower and we get a sweeter strawberry. We get a, 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 a crisper apple, blah, 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 blah. He went on and on and on and on about it. He's an astrophysicist. That is not his field of expertise. But yet, he comes across in favor of this technology, he comes across ignoring what glyphosate, what the function is. The function of glyphosate, if you go back to the history of glyphosate, you go back to the beginning, it was a chelating agent, it was meant to grab metal particles and separate. And that's what it does. It takes all the metal nutrients out of the food, the, the zinc, the iron, the potassium, calcium, manganese, magnesium. We go on and on. Every metal element is gone when they spray the wheat. That's why it's got to be fortified, enriched, all these fancy words. And then you see on bread, instead of having, you know, flour, a little yeast, you got 85 ingredients to preserve this stuff. Fillers that go into yoga mats. A little common sense, ladies and gentlemen, a little common sense. There is a plausible causative argument that can be made. The evidence is coming in left and right. Short cannabis corner this week, just a little bit here. I got a couple links, very good descriptions. Hemp, hemp, as we know, hemp got put into the new farm bill. There's some hemp legislation. I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't do a lot of predicting. Hemp is going to be your next agriculture crop. If you're in a position, you got some land, you want to do some investing, I, I would start looking real serious at hemp. Arlington Farms. Ever heard of Arlington Farms? The Pentagon is where Arlington Farms used to be. Uh, uh, 1901, there was a product in 1901 called Kennington Hemp. And it was a cross between a hemp that grew in Kentucky, a hemp that grew in Minnesota, and a hemp that grew in Washington. And it was a seed. It was a seed. That's what they grew at Arlington Farms was hemp. The USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, Mr. Dewey. He was, he was a botanist. He was a botanist, Dr. Dewey. He did all this stuff, and, and then in 1901, uh, uh, they, they came up with that uh, Kentucky, Minnesota, Washington mix, and then we had, and, and I'm thinking in our politically correct madness world today that this, this name of this plant would have been just the Democrats' head would have exploded. Pardon me, the Democrats' heads would have exploded because they called it Ching Tun, China and Washington strain, and, and then there were other strains that came out, uh, uh, but... 
in 1930, when William Randolph Hearst and DuPont came up with nylon rope and all this stuff that they could not make money with because hemp was in the way, it was a product, it was used, we got reefer madness. And of course, Dr. Dewey, he defended hemp to the hills, to no avail, there was too much money behind it, and now we have the Pentagon where Arlington Farms used to be. Whom do your elected officials represent, ladies and gentlemen? Read the art, links in the article, and, and, and before I get out of here, I want to touch on the thing. FDA green-lighted epidemics, I think it is. I, I, I'm not sure how to say the, uh, the deal, but the FDA did green-light a, uh, uh, let me see here, uh, the FDA green-lighted, what was it called? But the DEA, this, this is, the DEA warns, this is not something you, uh, uh, um, this isn't something that just right out the gate, let me see, yeah, the DEA has to weigh in, they, they haven't weighed in yet, don't get too crazy out there. Uh, what the Food and Drug Administration has approved a naturally derived CBD drug, a landmark decision that will trigger the health agency to seek rescheduling of the cannabinoid drug enforcement agency. First of all, cannabinoid oil is not a Schedule One, so that I have a little issue with the article. However, it does bring up a good issue. The FDA is is. Uh, uh, starting to approve certain things for seizure medicine and stuff in the marijuana industry. THC is what is the Schedule 1. So, again, whom do your elected officials represent, ladies and gentlemen? Read the article. It's a very good article, uh, uh, pretty balanced. Um, uh, the DEA has 90 days to decide uh, uh, about this FDA recommendation, and cannabinoid oil has proven to help a lot of people. Whom do your elected officials represent? Today is the last day. Today is the last day that you can weigh in on the food labeling. Get a hold of your legislatures. Get a hold of your Congress people. Get a hold of your senators and tell them, hey, look, we want a labeling bill. Don't be like Debbie. Let me stab my constituents in the back. Stabbing them now and give us a QR code that's a poppycock voluntary bunch of crap because that's what it is. My correspondent shirt. My correspondent shirt. You got some news? You got uh, uh, you got you got a T-shirt for me? You got a T-shirt for me? Let me. Uh, uh, I got to give a plug. I got to give a plug. Let me find this here to this radio show. It's uh, uh this is um, Food Freedom Radio. It is nine fifty a.m. Radio.com. www. 950radio.com and on, if I'm not mistaken, on a live show, Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. If you're in the Minnesota area, the show comes out of Minnesota. Uh, uh, a.m. Let me see here if I can read that. Voice of Minnesota, progressive, the progressive voice of Minnesota, www.am950radio.com. You can listen to them live. I'm going to be communicating with the, the host of the show, Laura Hedlund. I'm going to talk to her. Who knows? Maybe I might be on the radio with her talking a little bit of GMO stuff. I know they got a lot going on in Minnesota. Let's get back to the bees for just a minute and the correlation and causation. When you look at a map of the United States of America, as you get to the Midwest, the farming community, the farming belt, the agriculture, whatever you want to call it, a breadbasket, I think they call it, the closer you get to the Mississippi, the higher the glyphosate use is. Don't tell me. Neonicotoids and glyphosate don't have something to do with declining bee populations. Because if you're going to buy the drivel that's coming in about a mite, about colony collapsing, about this and that, when bees for millions of years flew the earth and did their thing and kept the earth green, provided your food, that's what they do. 
and now we don't have them. And if it wasn't a problem, why would they be doing robotic bees as a solution? Food for thought as we get out of here on GMO Tuesday. You got some comments? Leave a comment down below. Uh, are you part of the Monsanto propaganda machine? I know they're looking at my profiles everywhere. 13 people this week, ladies and gentlemen, in the agrochemical industry visiting my profile. I wonder why I'm so popular all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know? Uh, uh, what can you say? What can you say? Hey. We're going to get out of here today. If you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the station. That's how it works. Thanks to everybody that subscribed this week and all the new followers on Twitter who ask me every day. They join me in asking our president, his wife, the USDA, the FDA, and who is that? Mr. Sonny Perdue at the USDA and Mr. Scott Pruitt at the EPA. Please get the poison out of our food. If you can help out with the donation, keep the lights on, hit the website, give us a donation. It all helps out. It comes out clean. We have a good time. We have a good time. And go over and check out the, uh, the video. Nick did a, a really good video on CRISPR. Got it. Got some questions in there. Uh, 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 of course, you know me. I got something to say all the time. So I, I said something and I pulled them Monsanto propaganda machine. Industry shells right out of the woodwork. Just like, bam. They just come right out. Right on cue. Right on cue. Let's have a great day, folks. Let's all be safe out there.